welcome to the Feed You podcast, giving you the real scoop on raising your business to new heights. Expert education, inspiration, and motivation to fuel your purpose, your passion, and your profits. Here's your host, Elisa Connor. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Feed You podcast, the place where you can get inspiration, education, and information to feed you and your business. I am so grateful to have you here. And this week we are working on the first part of that. We are actually going to work on feeding ourselves. The title of this episode is self care isn't for suckers. And I wanted to start um, with a story. But I, I first wanted to ask you the question, how many times have you run around and did all the things, air quote, the things in your business, and then ended up having to spend two, three, four or more days on the couch recovering because you didn't take care of yourself. It does you no good. And it does you it does not do your business any good to wear yourself down. And I am raising my hand high because the typical time for me to do that is at the end of the year. I have from about, well, really from August on, but particularly November and December, um, I not only have all of the things that go with the holiday, holidays during those two time periods, but I also have um, lots and lots of family birthdays. And so it's just a lot of things piled onto one time of the year that nevertheless, January comes and I am sick as a dog. And so I have made it my goal this year to say no more often than I say yes to during those time periods. And so learning from that lesson, uh, I did do better this year. The year before I was actually supposed to go to a conference and I was, I have never been so sick in my life. And I know it's just because I did too much. That's a particularly busy time of year for me, um, client wise. And then we've got the holidays and I, I think I counted and there's like 15 birthdays in November and December just for family. And so um, I paid more attention to that at the end of last year. And I still got sick in January, but not nearly. I recovered much quickly, much more quickly. And so it made me think about a story I heard um, years and years. I feel like (laughs) the old lady in the shoe (laughs) years and years ago uh, when I started listening to podcasts, I would listen to them with one headphone in my ear and one out because I'd be riding my bike and I wanted to be able to still hear, uh, listen for traffic. But I remember listening to a podcast and I believe it was Lisa Nichols that was on that podcast and she was telling the story about how you can't um, fill your cup and then serve from that cup because then your cup isn't full anymore. And she said, instead, you need to let your cup run over onto the saucer and serve from the saucer so that you're always serving from a full cup. And I never forgot that story. Do I always live by that story? No, but it's a really good philosophy because if you are not filling up your cup, with joy and things that actually uh, nourish you. So that could be, you know, alone time, it could be meditation, it could be doing something creative, it could be getting outdoors, whatever that is that kind of feeds your soul and your creativity and gives you a break um, from your business. Those are the items that fill your cup. And when we fill it, we actually need to overfill it. So it's it's running over onto the saucer like a like a teacup saucer because if we start to take from the cup and it's not full we become depleted again and so when you start serving from the saucer saucer it's because you have extra to give and so you can give from that place of joy and abundance and um love and all of those things that you know it, you joyfully can give because your cup is already full and so i really wanted to talk about that today because as entrepreneurs we um very rarely take a break especially a mental break from our business and when we don't take time to refill our cup and i notice for myself a big one for me is i need to be creative and it doesn't really matter how i create as long as i create something And so I'm adding that into my repertoire on a regular basis, whether that's, you know, running down to my stamp room and creating a couple cards or 
um, creating a new meal or whatever it is. Um, in some way, creating really helps me. And of course, being outdoors, but creating really refills that cup. And so I've kind of designated the afternoon on Friday afternoons um, to be my time to be creative, whether it's just coloring or journaling or whatever. But I, I noticed a trend and I'm going to share that with you in just, just a few minutes. But I wanted to give you um, some symptoms to help you bring awareness to whether or not you are uh, experiencing a lack of self-care. So if you're if you're feeling any of these symptoms, you definitely need to uh, schedule into your calendar some time to take care of you. And I'm going to tell you uh, why in in just a little bit. But so some symptoms of not. Uh, filling from your sauce or feeding from your saucer, saucer and instead filling are you feeding people from your cup or that you are confused in your life or your business you're feeling stuck you're unmotivated you don't want to take action steps you're tired you feel burned out you're frustrated overwhelmed anxious unsure fearful angry and the list goes on all of those things that you're just like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if I should be doing this business. I don't know if I should be an entrepreneur. I'm just gonna go get a job, blah, blah, blah. Chances are very, very, very high that you probably need to take a break and do something outside of your business because you get in that swirling energy and it's really hard to break out of it and see the forest despite the trees. And so I don't, I think that's, I sometimes screw up the sayings and just make up my own. So just go with it. Um, but you know what I mean? Like you can't see what's really happening because you're too close to it. You're not taking a break and you can't see a different perspective. So if you're feeling any of those, taking some time for self care is going to help you get back on track and really realign with why you're doing what you're doing and why you jumped into this roller coaster of entrepreneurship in the first place. So I have five ways for you to get back on track. And um, I'm going to go through those in a minute. But I really wanted to share a personal story with you on an experiment I've been doing with myself. And it's now February 21st. I think I started this the first week of February, but it might have been the last week of January. And I'd have to go back and look. But so one of the items that I committed to myself during that time period, and I'd have to go look at my Peloton app to be able to tell you exactly, but I know that I'm on track, um, was committing to doing physical exercise every single day of some sort. And, you know, for me, that looks like either a bike ride or I've gone for a walk or I'm doing yoga. And then the other thing I, I want to build in in March is I want to start doing some strength training. And part of that is that just moving that energy throughout my body really helps me to get focused. And so not only is adding the creativity in once a week significant, but the daily movement of some sort is really significant. And so you might be thinking, when I first started this, there was so much guilt around like, oh, you shouldn't be working out. It's taking up too much time. You're spending an hour doing this. Da, 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 da. And I just want to tell you, ultimately, I have to stop myself in my tracks and look back over what has happened in the last month since I've started doing this. And I know Peloton tells me like I could pull it up and I'm recording, so I'm not going to that. But you know, my um, exercise, cause it compares like over the last 30 days, your increase and my increase is significantly higher. And so prior to giving myself this little challenge, it, you know, I think my, I might get out, I might've worked out maybe twice a week. It's really hard for me in the winter. You know, I'm really good about it during when it's warm out. Um, because I'll go walk. Like I love to go walk. I live in a, in a great area with lots of nature and there's a lake nearby. It's just, it's really easy for me to get out and do that. But when it's cold, like ugh, yesterday we woke up and I think it was nine. I'm all, oh, it's terrible. I don't want to go out there. So I've been really um, diligent in committing to exercising in some way during during the winter, especially spring and winter and late fall. And so um, I know that that amount is up significantly over the last 30 days because of this challenge that I've given myself. But what is more impressive other than me sticking with the challenge is what has been happening with my business. 
And so I think um, what is so interesting about this is that when you free up that time to mentally decompress, whether that's through exercise or creativity or combination of all those things, um, you free up the energy for the universe to deliver to you that which you've been wanting. But when you stay stuck, it, the energy can't move. The energy is literally stuck. And so in the last month, I have had the opportunity to go to Arizona for my business. I got to work with Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi on a project. I have been um, had multiple additional product projects offered to me um, with uh, Pete Vargas with Adventure Reach. I have had multiple clients come through. I've had more action in my business in the last six weeks, or I guess it's maybe four weeks, the last four weeks that I had for the entire month of January. And so it's just, it's been pretty incredible for me to see this happen because when I took this, um, the intention and I put it into action and I was like, you know what, I, I, this is my life and I deserve to take the time to take care of myself. And it's just been pretty miraculous to watch. It's been a really good experiment for me to see like what would happen if I did this. And so far I'm loving it because I'm still taking care of myself. And guess what? My business, I still have business coming in. The business is still running. I'm more focused than ever. And um, I have less time to think about all of the reasons why I can't do the things that I want to do. And I think a lot of times we like to be stuck in the little minutia and not making progress instead of just taking strategic action and moving forward. So I just wanted to share that with you that this isn't just woo woo and fluff about taking care of yourself. It really will make a difference in your business. And if you go and look at, you know, the most successful entrepreneurs or industry leaders in your field, I will bet you the majority of them have not only a morning routine, but that morning routine or their daily routine includes some sort of movement, exercise, and ability to decompress. So that's why it was important for me to throw this episode um, out there to you guys and give you some perspective on how to do that for yourself and in your business. And so I came up with five ways that you can take care of yourself. And they're from all different, I mean, they're all interrelated, but you could do one, two, three, four, or all five of these, or, you know, spread them out, do one a day, whatever you want to do. Um, but you're going to have to find what works for you. That's, that's the key here. And so I end up doing a lot of these just, you know, I'll do two at a time or some of them I do every day. And so, um, let's jump through the list. So As I mentioned, as entrepreneurs, we are, you know, we're driven. It's hard for us to rest because we're constantly thinking about our business. And we are constantly, even if we are sitting down mentally, we never stop. And as a society, we are not programmed to rest. And so my number one tip is to find a way to rest. That means unplugging from your phone, unplugging from like, if that means sitting around and binging on Netflix, that means binging on Netflix but something that gets your brain out of work mode. And um, that rest is critical for you to increase revenue and keep moving forward with your business. I just gave you the story of, um, you know, what my experiment has been with riding my bike and taking that time to decompress and move the energy, not only um, in my, world, but in my personal body. But also, you know, when you step away from your business and you actually just turn it off for a little bit, it kind of reminds me of, um, well, anyway, it kind of reminds me of like, you know, the alarm clock (laughs) that you just like hit the off button and you're like, it's not going to snooze anymore. It's just off. And if you can take that time and it doesn't have to be a long period of time, you know, it could even just be half an hour to an hour but when you give your brain the time to just rest and you know maybe you sleep a little longer, maybe you um, just sit on the couch and veg, maybe you're reading a book, maybe you're drawing, whatever that is, um, but just taking time to rest, that is when you have the opportunity to open yourself up to new ideas, 
new directions for your business, new content you can create, new avenues um, that you want to take your business and all of those pieces of information that you are struggling to get a grasp on and you can't get a grasp on them because you won't let your brain quit. And so your brain is constantly focusing on the next thing, next thing, next thing, the next thing. And that includes social media and it includes email and includes all of those things. Because even if you get on Facebook for fun, ultimately, if you're a business owner, you're going to find yourself going down a rabbit hole that takes you to something that's not fun. And so it's just really great if you can unplug and just like turn your brain off for a little bit because it gives your brain the opportunity to rest, recharge and deliver to you even better information and ideas and suggestions and all of those things that you've been wrestling with so hard, they just magically appear. And so my number one tip for you is to find some time to rest and do the polar opposite of what you usually do. And so if you're usually like vegging on the couch after dinner and watching Netflix, think about like taking a yoga class. I love the Peloton app. Like I should probably be a spokesperson for them because I tell everybody about it. Um, But you know, you don't have to have a Peloton bike. In fact, I don't have a Peloton bike, Peloton bike right now. I'm saving up to get one because I, I like my bike, but it's, eh, you know, it's not great. But what I have in the meantime is the app. I think it's like $12 a month and you get access to not only cycling classes, but there's strength building, there's running, there's yoga, there's meditation. Um, there's, I don't know, there's a ton of stuff on there. And it's all on the app for $12 a month. I'm like, you can't even go to the gym for that. So what's really nice is that, you know, if you if you look at it and you're like, um, you know, I don't, I don't wanna just sit on the couch today. I'm gonna do yoga. You can pull up a yoga class. You can choose the time. You can choose the difficulty level. You can even pick the instructors that you like. And so getting out of that mode of just always doing the same old thing, like if you always go out for dinner, Instead, like get some groceries and cook yourself a meal because it's going to break up that habit that your brain and kind of like a um, the tread that keeps like it's like a record tread. It just keeps playing the same thing and it makes a groove. But when you disrupt that groove, it gives your brain the opportunity to go, oh, wait a minute. Here's that thing we've been looking for. And so then it will open that idea or that suggestion up to you and you can be you can receive it. So number one tip for you is to find some time to rest and disrupt your pattern of rest. Um, If that normally looks like vegging on the couch watching TV, then how do you disrupt that? Maybe go for a walk, have a conversation, go out with friends, whatever that looks like. Um, So tip number one. Tip number two is uh, to create something. And I know um, a lot of you may be saying to yourself, I'm not creative. And I will challenge you on that perspective because I used to teach stamping classes to people who never thought they were creative and they would walk away and they would have scrapbook page or a card. And they're like, I never thought I was creative. In fact, for the longest time, I never thought I was creative. And then I just found the right outlets. And then I tell that to people and they're like, are you kidding me? You're like one of the most creative people I know. Well, to me, growing up, my mom, Uh, was very, she's very artistic and she was a painter. And so to me, I was like, no, to be creative, you have to be painting or drawing or, and I'm, I'm like, for me drawing, I'm, I'm a good stick figure drawer. That's about it. But I never thought I was creative because I didn't fit into that category. And so I want to encourage you to find the category that works for you and to not underestimate the power of creativity. And so there are so many things you could do to be creative you could write, you could draw, you could journal, you could sew, you could stamp, you could paint something if you wanted. There's a lot of those like paint and sip places. Those are super fun. You could just pick up a coloring book and color, find your favorite. Like I love to smell new crayons. That's kind of one of my weird things that I do. I just love the smell of new crayons. So sometimes I'll just go buy a box of crayons and print out color sheets from the internet and just color because it's just fun. And it like gets my brain thinking about different things and Um, It's something I can do as I'm just sitting around. Uh, You could cook and create a new recipe or follow a recipe. You could build something. Maybe you are a woodworker or a metalworker and you just want to build something new. 
Um, you could design something like a lot of times people will just want to design something either electronically. I kind of want you to get out of the electronic mindset because that's getting you pulls you back into technology. But, you know, if that's um, designing is something that you enjoy, but it's not something you do for work, that might be something or maybe just get a piece of paper and design something. Um, play with Play-Doh. I have some friends in the Denver area that actually have a Play-Doh company for adults. And um, I'm trying to remember the name of it. But anyway, they have created that as a stress reliever for adults. And it's made with essential oils. And they've done a bunch of studies to determine, you know, what that does for not only adults, but for kids that struggle with ADD and ADHD and some of the other things that are um, attention driven and have seen marvelous results from their their play-doh and so you know if you don't have play-doh you can go you know go buy some or you can make your own there's tons of recipes on the on the internet especially on pinterest to just make your own it takes like zero ingredients so um i used to do it for my kids all the time we used to also make slime so like if you wanted to make slime you could do that i think you need elmer's glue for that but just to like play like build a an animal out of play-doh and just do it for fun not because it's perfect and anything you can think of to get outside of your head join a local art class do a dance class um but just somehow let your creativity fly and get back to the things that you used to really love doing when you were younger and that you've just sort of let go to the wayside because you haven't had time because it's going to open you up to all of the things that um, you feel stuck in right now. It's gonna open you up. It's gonna open the road for you and you're gonna have new vision and new insights. And um, not only that, but you're gonna be relaxed. So the tip number two I have is to do something creative. And number three, this is gonna seem like a no brainer, but we, as humans breathe all day, every day. However, we do not consciously breathe hardly ever. And so I wanna encourage you to do some deep breathing. And that can be, you know, that can take five minutes or you can do an entire yoga session, it can be up to 90 minutes. Um, but the difference between stretching and yoga is the breath. Like you have to consciously be breathing. And so being focused on just that breathing, whether that's through yoga or meditation or just, you know, breathing in and out, taking time to breathe in and out and realizing your body amazingly keeps breathing all the time and consciously um, being aware of that breath and what it's doing to your energetic field will reset everything for you. So if you're stressed out and you are worried and whatever, just like literally close your eyes and count your breaths and just breathe as deeply as you can. And every breath that you can deepen, both the inhale and the exhale will completely impact your central nervous system. And, you know, after 20 breaths, you're gonna feel completely differently. And so um, really, I can't emphasize enough the benefits of just taking time to breathe and consciously breathe. So the long and short of that tip is to just breathe and it seems really simple and easy to do but a lot of times when you're stressed and um, it reminds me of when you're doing yoga a lot of times like you will catch yourself in a pose um, that is particularly challenging or even that hurts a little um, or that is you know maybe it's a really tight muscle and you will uh, I will catch myself holding my breath and not even realizing it And when I take a minute to recognize, oh yeah, by the way, you should probably breathe through this or get a a reminder from the instructor, you know, breathe through that if it's really challenging. Like if you're in something like pigeon, um, which really works your hip muscle and your um, piriformis muscle, which are really tight if you cycle or run or do any of those activities. Um, But just taking a moment and going, oh yeah, I probably should breathe, huh? There's an idea. And so the same thing happens in business. You know, you get really stressed out and you're, you start thinking about all the things that need to be done and your ever growing to do list and all of the, you know, the stress around money and getting clients and doing all the marketing things that you need to do and doing all the business things you need to do and serving clients and the list is long. But if you can just take a minute and take things one at a time, take a deep breath, 
or 10 and just realize that, you know what, it all works out the way it's supposed to. And one of my favorite sayings, and I've seen it a lot lately, um, is that that which is for you will not, will not pass you by. And so we get really worked up about things that really we don't need to spend energy on. And so I would like to encourage you to, when you're feeling that stressed out, just to close your eyes, take some breaths, and just realize there is only so much you can do right now. And what's the next thing you need that absolutely has to be done and just go from there. So tip number three is to keep breathing, my friends, keep breathing. So tip number four, I talked a little bit about, and that is to commit to some sort of exercise or movement. And I would really um, challenge you to do this daily. If you're not exercising at all right now, maybe that looks um, as easy as taking a walk around the block every day at lunchtime. No matter what the weather is, you would be surprised at what a little bit of fresh air and your feet pounding the pavement can do to your morale, to your enthusiasm, to really recharge yourself and your business. And I, I have another example. So it's been snowing pretty much nonstop. <laughs> I don't want to say nonstop, but it's been snowing a lot for February in Co- in Colorado. And um, it used to snow like this years and years ago, but we haven't had a really full February of snow for quite a while. And today is actually a beautiful day. It's one of the first days that it hasn't been really cold and snowy. But um, the other day it had snowed and it wasn't a ton. It was maybe two or three inches. And I just went out for maybe 15 minutes and shoveled snow just to get it off the driveway and, you know, make sure people weren't slipping and sliding as they came up and down. And I was surprised at just how recharging being outside and breathing even that cold, chilly air was for just a short period of time. And so if you can just take a walk and even if it's for, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes in the middle of your day or any time of your day, but particularly in the middle of the day, I think it is going to surprise you at how much it's going to recharge you and get you moving in the right direction. Um, A lot of times in the afternoon, specifically right after lunch, I kind of go into a slump, like my stomach is full of lunch and I don't eat a super heavy lunch, but still it's like, oh, it's the end of the day and you've had a really busy morning and, um, you know, probably 1230, 1230, between 1230 and two is rough for me. And so I just, uh, again, did an experiment and just started to go outside even for 10 or 15 minutes. Maybe I can't do an entire walk like I normally would, but just, you know, taking the long way to go to the mailbox. My mailbox is down the street. And so instead of going the short way, I go all the way around the block and then go to, to the mailbox. But just having that few extra minutes and bundling up if it's cold out, really has impacted the way that my brain can just kind of take a little mini recharge and um, come back and hit it hard for the rest of the afternoon. So I challenge you to look at, you know, what could you do? Is it just maybe walking the stairs? Maybe you live in an apartment building and it's just going up and down this all of the stairs twice or even just once, um, or you know, maybe walking down the stairs and taking the elevator back up. But just to get out of your space and get your energy moving and just... Um, move your body a little bit and see, uh, see what it does for you. And I would love for you to report back, come and tell me in the Facebook group. Um, the link is in the show notes for, uh, this episode, which you can find at alisaconnor.com forward slash 78. Um, and I'm going to put some resources over there for creativity and I'll put the Peloton app and a few things that I've mentioned just so you have them. And, um, I would like to hear what you're doing. And then I also like the other key point I want to make on this is like, sometimes we get in a rut with exercise as well. I know um, we all kind of have our favorites. Like for me, I love to cycle. That's one of my things. I found it later in life and I'm not a runner. I, I like, I love to walk and hike and do that kind of stuff. Running is not my favorite. It's just my joints don't like it. Um, but I really love cycling. I've always liked swimming. And so sometimes we need to get out of our rut. And again, we like make that groove and we do the same thing again and again and again. And so if you are a regular exerciser, I want to challenge you to get out of your rut and try something new. And what does that look like? So one of the things that I've been pursuing or, um, 
in, I'll say investigating as something that I want to try is it's called bar. Uh, if anybody does bar, let me know. It's B-A-R-R-E, but it's kind of like ballet on steroids. <laughs> and so when I was a little girl, I always wanted to be a ballerina. And so of course my mom automatically signed me up for tap dancing instead of ballet. This was the story of my life. <laughs> like anything I ever wanted to do, she's like, oh, that's nice. You want to take piano? I'm going to sign you up for organ. And so yes, there was a lot of friction <laughs> between my mom and I when I was little because it didn't really matter what I wanted to do. She had her own ideas of what I should be doing. So I always wanted to be a ballerina. And so because I had tap dance lessons and not ballet lessons, I did not get to fulfill that dream of being a ballerina. So perhaps that is the reason I am now interested in bar fitness. Um, but it's supposed to be really great for your uh, body. And I found a bar, I guess it's a studio, a bar studio and a few classes that I'm going to check out. So that is going to be... Um, one of my goals for April. I know that it's not going to happen before that because I've got some really big projects coming up and um, some client work that needs to be finished finished up next month. So, um, but that is on my that is my own challenge that I'm taking. But so maybe for you it's not bar fitness. Maybe it's you know taking a CrossFit class or doing Zumba or um, you know maybe you're wanting to just start exercising again. And so it's cold and yucky where you are. And so maybe it's going to the mall before they open. I don't know if you guys know this, but pretty much every indoor mall opens an hour before the mall so you can go walk. So if you um, are struggling for a place to go work out and you live near a mall, there you go. Another place that um, we can often walk is we have a rec center that has an indoor track and there's a lot of places that have indoor tracks. Um, that you can just go and, and walk that for free and do your thing and get some exercise. Or um, if you have a treadmill, you want to go to the gym and work, work it on the treadmill, go do that. There's a lot of, um, like I mentioned, Peloton on Peloton. I know they have a lot of workouts that work around that equipment. And so you're not just walking, maybe you're doing a um, interval class that they choose, like what the incline is and how fast you're going. And of course, you know, it can all be modified for your fitness level, but just try something new. Maybe you've never done yoga or maybe you've never done Pilates and you want to try that. So get out of your rut and just try something new because you never know uh, how it might transform what your favorite thing is um, or the your favorite choice of exercise. I know that happened with me with cycling. Actually, I had a friend who was a spin in instructor years ago and I was always on the elliptical and she's like, oh, just come to my class. And I'm like, no, I like the elliptical. Well, I ended up going one day and I just fell in love with that class and it was such a great workout and it was fun and it was inspiring. And so um, I've been spinning ever since and uh, I mix it up. I don't always spin, but it is my winter, I don't know if it's a sport, my winter workout of choice. Um, and then during the summer, I just love to ride my bike. I've always loved to ride my bike. So I am lucky enough to live in an area where I can do that very easily and not have to play with traffic <laughs> for lack of a better term. So tip number four for you to take care of yourself is to get out and move that booty. So I want to know what you guys are doing. I want to know uh, over in the Facebook group what you guys are going to choose to get out of the rut of either doing no activity or changing up your activity. Cause I'm, I shared mine. So I want you guys to come and tell me what you're going to do. And then tip number five, this is a really good one. And I am not, I'm going to confess, I'm not great at this, but I'm working on it. Um, but it's to journal. And when I do journal, it's so, um, freeing and productive and so inspiring. And so why doesn't she do it more? You might be asking, hmm, yeah, I'm still trying to figure that out. You know, we're all, we're all a work in progress. So, um, but journaling. And so one of the tricks, and I actually asked a friend who journals fairly regularly, um, if she does this, but one of the things that I will do is have a conversation with myself and what it has ended up being is a conversation with my, um, inner driver. I call it like the inner, the little Elisa inside of me who, who really is controlling the show and knows which direction I need to go, but I'll have a conversation and it's just, it is, it simply looks like I will write out a question and then wait for the answer. And the answer shows up writing on the paper the same way. So it's just a, it's a shift between 
thoughts, for lack of a, a way to describe it. That sounds a little bit crazy now that I'm saying it out loud. But, um, you know, I'll ask myself the question and then I'll answer the question. And, you know, usually the answer is coming from somewhere deeper inside of me. And so I don't know how that looks for you. Everybody journals different and maybe you need a prompt, you need questions to answer. I'm telling you right now, there are a gajillion resources for journal prompts out there. And I could give you some, but just Google journal prompts and you will find a million of them. But it's a really great way to just get things out of your head and also get out, get yourself out of your head. But um, just get ideas out of your head. We carry around a lot of stuff in our brain. And sometimes you just need to put it all down on paper so you can let go of it. And even if you never do anything with it, you have captured it, your brain can let go of it. And so I wanna encourage you to, and one little tip on journaling is I really want you to go and pick out a beautiful journal. Because sometimes, you know, we're like, oh yeah, I'll just use a notebook. Well, it's not as, I'm just saying, it's not as fun to just have any old journal. And so, I really think it's kind of cool to have a journal that you decorate yourself, but that's just me being creative. But you know, find a journal. You can even just go on Amazon and be like, ooh, I really love this one because it's color, because of the color or because of a saying it has. Um, A great place to find journals if you have one where you live is Hobby Lobby. They have tons of journals. Um, And then, you know, there's other, there's tons of bookstores and different places like Barnes and Noble has great journals and, I'm trying to think of the other place that's uh, Second and Charles. I spend a lot of time at Second and Charles because my boys love to go look at movies and video games. And they have a lot of used books, but they have good journals. Um, lots. They have like two aisles of journals at, at Second and Charles if you have one of those. So there's lots of fun places, but just go pick out one that resonates with you and it, it will encourage you to want to use it because you're like, oh, it's so pretty. I want to write in it. Um, and then I'm like a I'm an office supply junkie, so I love pens. Um, and so I have a set of pens. I'm, I was gonna tell you the name of them. I bought these like three or four times. They're um, Schneider pens and they're made in Germany and they're a gel pen, but they come in like eight colors. And so I love it because I can, and there's definitely colors I never use like orange. <laughs> I don't know why, but I have a bunch of orange ones cause I never use them, but you can only buy them in like blue, black, or the multi-pack. And so um, always the pink and purple are gone. And then I have orange and green left. So anyway, find a pen. The whole point is, is find a pen that you really like because that will also encourage you to pick up that journal and just start documenting things that are running around rampant in your head. And um, it's a great way to decompress and also just let go of the to-do list. And you can you can journal however you want. Like there's a lot of times when I first started journaling, I would just sketch and draw and um, doodle and just random. Like whatever it takes for you, that can be your safe space. So that is my last tip for uh, taking care of yourself. So I'm just gonna recap those really quick just so you have them and then um, As I mentioned, I will put some of the resources that I mentioned in this episode in the show notes, which you can find at elisaconnor.com forward slash 78. But here's the recap. Number one is to rest. That's like as easy as it gets. You just need to take some time and rest, whether that's to take a nap or whatever it looks like. Number two is to get out your creative juices. And I listed a whole bunch of ways to do that, but maybe I, maybe you came up with one that I didn't. I would love for you to come and share it because I'm always looking for new ways to be creative. Number three, here's a simple one. How about breathing? How about taking some deep breaths and just giving yourself some time to breathe? And we don't typically do that as entrepreneurs or business owners. We are too busy running amok. And so take a deep breath or 10. Number four, get out there and move your booty. Get some exercise, even if it's five, 10 minutes a day or more. Um, And if you're currently exercising, I wanna challenge you to kick it up a notch and try something new. And I also wanna hear about what it is over in the Facebook group. So I'm gonna tell you how the bar class goes when I sign up for it, probably not till April, but uh, I don't know, I might fit it in in March, we'll see. But I'm gonna let you know. And then the other one that I really wanna try, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but it's like, um, I think it's bungee yoga. Like, have you ever seen like the bungee workouts? So I don't know if you guys have that, but that looks super fun too. So I have to really search for that one though. 
And then the last tip for today's episode is to pick up that journal, get everything out of your head and start putting it down on paper. Whether you ever do anything with it or not, just get it out of your paper, use that kinetic energy and uh, draw, doodle, journal, whatever you wanna do. So I'm hoping that you are inspired by this episode to go and take some self-care so it will free up your brain and your energy to create even more profitability and inspiration in your business. I look forward to seeing you next week. In the meantime, take care. 